Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from My Stain Gamers, and welcome. So you can see around us, planets have finally arrived, and they're absolutely amazing. Now let's take a look around a few of the different biomes, and we don't actually get stuck into the meat of this update. Now first off, you'll notice there's a lake over there, and you're going, hang on, is that water, Aaron? Uh, if we get a little bit closer, it's technically water, it's actually ice, and it's a solid state, so you can use it for everything water would actually be used for. Maybe one day in the future, ice will be replaced by liquid forming water, but it's not just here yet. But still, from a distance, it looks like a lake, and it does look very beautiful. So let's have a look around some of the other biomes. So we've explored this sort of green forest plain, but let's actually hover over here, and we'll enter into a more deserty, sandy Sahara area. And this area is really cool. It's got lovely canyons. Now, an interesting thing to take consideration when we're actually touring around this place is a lot of this terrain has been hand sculpted. The most things are randomly generated, but then it comes down to it. A lot of these items have been sculpted, so they look more natural parts of the terrain so you can see how it leads into this canyon here just look at the scale of that tree so as we zoom out just how small it is on the actual landscape itself and it leads into a really nice valley you can imagine building across here some sort of bridge or way of getting across the gap in the valley itself let's head over to one of the snow biomes so we've got a more natural desert here so the more natural desert is is just populated by dust and a little bit of one or two this i think this is actually a sahara area the desert's not quite sandy but we'll head over to here and we'll see what we've got. So we've got another beautiful valley. And there we go. We've got a proper desert area here. You see the texture of the sand is a little bit different. And you've got these like cactus sort of carcasses of trees that are laying around. Just really nice, really created to a beautiful level of detail. So the final area we need to find is snow. So to do that, we'll zoom out of the planet. Just like how smooth that was in and out. There's no atmospheric effect, so you're not going to burn up on entry. The worst you can do is crash, not have a very well-prepared ship. So we're looking for an ice biome on this planet but i can't i don't seem to see it i think it might be along the bottom area here and maybe it's in the dark area you can see the dark area of the planet just how scary that is we'll, we'll fly down there and i'll show you what it looks like on the dark side we've flown into the planet by mistake so as it loads up you can actually see the darkness of the terrain itself so you're going to need a good bit of source of power generators to actually light up these dark canyons at night time but we'll fly back up and we'll find ourselves an icy area there we go a lovely ice plane let's see sort of what sort of vegetation we're going to get in this area so we hover down, some bushes and trees should appear. So we've got some snow-topped bushes, some shrubs, and a really nice reflective landscape. Beautiful. Let's have a look at another planet. So now we leave in the Earth-like planet. We're actually heading to the next one along that I believe is Mars. So you can actually see we've got this orange planet, but Mars actually has a moon in this case. You can see we've got a little cool moon on the side. Now the moons work just like the planets, and in most of the cases they actually have atmospheres as well. Um, the breathing difficulty depends, so if we see there, we've got actually high oxygen on this particular area, but let's actually hover over to the next one, and this is Mars itself, so you can see we've got that orange mars essent glow, so if we're down here in the atmosphere, we'll slow our speed down, and we'll get a bit closer to the actual ground itself, you can see just how that is, we've got a bit of snow build up and ice, but on the top of here, we've got a really natural sort of Mars planet and it comes into these beautiful craters here that look like they've been carved out over time just a perfect place for a base or a station but just quite a simple planet mars is nothing too fancy nothing crazy with the biome so let's head to the most crazy planet that's really far away you can see it on the horizon there we've got a little bit of an alien planet now the alien planet is host to a whole variety of really unusual things it's not like anything you've seen before so we'll slowly gain here you can just see the distances it's actually taking time to get here with spectator and it's lit up. You can see the atmosphere is some sort of unbreathable, really hostile-looking substance. And as we get closer in, you'll see the floor starts to appear. It's going to load in. This one always takes a second or two more to load in for me. So you can see it's actually froze into position. We'll let it catch up, and we'll see exactly what it's like. Oh, I've loaded through the planet. That's never a good thing. Load back up to the surface, and we can see some of the trees. So you can see the trees are all red in form. I keep zooming through the planet. I need to slow my speed down a bit. Let the ground actually load up around me. Spectator, so you can see we've got a mixture of snow and these beautiful little red trees. This this planet is one of my favourites by far. The detailing on it in these lower valley areas where it transitions between different greeny tones. I mean, there's not too many aliens. We've obviously got the saboids out there, but maybe an alien or creepy sort of creature in the future would be really cool. Anyway, we've had a quick overview of the planets. The biomes do change a little bit differently on the alien planet, but they're nothing that's really recognisable. Just changes from greens to tans. We'll slow the speed up of the spectator. So we can actually catch up with performance there you go you can see the atmosphere or 
the area above is moving as well it's really nice day and night cycles work instead of the planet moving the sun actually rotates around the whole solar system so that's something to take into mind as well wow look at that foresty area let's go down to a lower level just to see how far it looks so look at that you can see right onto the horizon you'll probably never build a base bigger in this little pocket here and you'll always be driving over the next ridge building your rovers and exploring the planet and then the more important thing is getting off here and actually getting out into space wow there's so much to do now the next major part of this update is a new thruster so you can see here we've got this it looks like a standard sort of jet engine this is actually an atmospheric thruster and it works very similarly to all the other thrusters but it can only be used for in sort of atmospheric flight and it's very efficient very useful we'll actually just switch over to the character that's on the platform here behind and we'll take one of these ships off now the balance of these ships has to be done quite efficiently you can see we can actually take off here with the thrusters and having inertia dampeners on will force the thrust down to actually keep us in a constant hover but if we actually add a little bit of force forward another thing to think about with these thrusters as well is if you do anything sharp or silly like this you'll see the gravity actually takes over the ship and starts to pull it towards the ground you can see like that we'll adjust back so the atmospheric thrusters for you there very simple just like all the other thrusters and they run off a standard sort of electrical power pack not needing too many resources so that's always very useful to have so now we're at the custom world menu i've got a few more features to show you on here now easy start earth Easy Start Mars, Easy Start Alien, and Easy Start Mood. Now, these are the new starting scenarios, and they have a whole host of planets, but you actually start on the biome that it shows on the picture here. So you've got Mars, the alien landscape to choose from, human tuners of the moon. Now, if you want to start at a completely random location, you've got the star system, empty star system with three planets and their moons. Very nice indeed. And we also have a single habitable planet. So if you just want to build on one planet, you're not really fussed about visiting others. That's pretty cool as well. Now, down here, we have the world generator. So if we click on there, you can actually see we can generate some settings so we can choose the asteroid density and we can also change the flora density so this is the amount of foliage that will be on planets all the way from extreme to low and the lower settings will benefit you if you want to do more rovers the higher settings will give you more of a jungle sort of atmosphere a lot more trees a lot more bushes and grass really cool to have a look at indeed now the next thing i want to show you are the saboids and you can see from around me my base defense has done its job and it's killed them but you can also see that I am actually a Saboid myself, and you can do this by going to the med bay, just like you could do and play as a deer in Medieval Engineers. You can actually play as a Saboid, and you've got this really cool creature. Look how its legs move. Its head's slightly tilted off to one side, and every now and then, it makes a really creepy howling noise. And you've got to be really careful with these guys. They'll emerge from the ground and attack you, and they come in slight waves of four or five at a time. And you can fight most of them off. If you've not got your assault rifle ready, though, you can be caught off guard and they will kill you quite quickly. So be on alert. And especially if you're in a survival mode, watch out for them caves and tunnels. A perfect place to find a large nest of saboids. Anyway, let's move on. Now, a question that's got many players worried is about how the gravity works. Will it suck in any ship that's flying past the planet? Well, no, it works quite easily, actually. It's quite simple, and you shouldn't live in fear of being sucked down to a planet. So you can see the gravity is actually starting to build up very slowly. And since the gravity is at such a low level, and we're out here in space, a ship like this red one here can actually fight the gravitational pull very easily you can see it's not actually even having to thrust too hard it's thrusting just to equal its power and keep its position against that gravitational pull but on the other hand if we actually get to an area where the gravitational pull is getting much stronger so where we're going down to here just outside the atmosphere it'll actually begin pulling the ship in some ships with a heavy sort of power pack could fight past this but you can see the actual power of it pulling that red ship towards the planet so a player has to be really careful here and he's got to try to get out of that or even activate his hydrogen thrusters but once that pull begins it is very hard to get out of it so if you want to play it carefully take a wide berth around the planet i strongly recommend or you'll end up like this guy and you'll be slowly sucked down towards the planet's surface each one of them blocks weighing you down without a hydrogen thruster there's no chance you're going to get off there anytime soon or even break out of that gravitational fall so if this pilot would have got the memo and changed to hydrogen thrusters or got himself some atmospheric flight thrusters he might have just survived landing on this planet but at this state, maximum velocity impacting the side of a planet like this, it's not going to end very well for him. The ship can absorb a lot of the damage, but at the same time, it's going to be crippled down the side that is hit. So let's actually take a look at that. We've lost a whole engine base cell, and we've got a lot of damage to the front end there as well. We've also destroyed some trees on this alien planet. But the majority of the ship could be repaired, fitted with hydrogen thrusters, and lifted. So just be very careful when you're using gravity and you're close to the surface.